good afternoon or potentially good morning to you all, depending on where you are. Um, TTAG members and guests, thank you so much for including me on your agenda today. As was mentioned, my name is Kevin English, and I currently serve as the director of what we call Aztec, uh, the Albuquerque Area Southwest Tribal Epidemiology Center. Uh, we're one of 12 tribal epicenters. We're based in Albuquerque. Uh, we serve 27 tribal communities um, in the Indian Health Service Albuquerque area. And I look forward to the opportunity today to share with you a little bit about who the Tribal Epidemiology Centers are and what we do. I know many of you are already familiar with our work, um, and so it's good to see some familiar faces and names here today. So first of all, um, looking at our history, Tribal Epidemiology Centers, sometimes we call ourselves TECS for short, uh, we were established with the Indian Healthcare Improvement Act, and this was back in 1996. And originally there were four tribal epicenters um, that were established as the initial cohort of tribal epicenters. There are now 12 of us. We all function independently in service to the constituents in our region, um, tribes, or, tribes or urban Indian health organizations, um, but we also work together as part of a national group, which I'll share a little bit more about. Uh, we do all receive some core funding via a cooperative agreement with the Indian Health Service Division of Epidemiology and Disease Prevention. If you're not familiar with where we are located and who we serve, this map I think does a good job of demonstrating that. You'll see that the service areas and the number of techs uh, is very, very similar to the Indian Health Service administrative areas. The only difference would be that the Intertribal Council of Arizona serves two IHS areas. Uh, Phoenix and Tucson, and that we also have the Urban Indian Health Institute based out of Seattle, but serving the urban Indian healthcare organizations throughout the country. So in 2010, with the Affordable Care Act passage, we permanently reauthorized the Indian Healthcare Improvement Act. Along with that were a number of um, items for tribal epidemiology centers. First, at this time, we were provided with public health authority status, um, which is further um, explained to mean that Health and Human Services Department, HHS, is now directed to provide tribal epicenters with access to HHS data systems and protected health information. It also stipulates that the CDC shall provide tribal epicenters with technical assistance and clearly states that each Indian Health Service area must have tribal epidemiology center access. The legislation also outlines seven core functions that all tribal epidemiology centers um, should encompass in their scopes of work. And it's really important here to talk about the fact that while each of us share these seven core functions, the way we operationalize them may vary. And it really is dependent upon the population that we serve. Uh, we are service, we are providing public health service to tribal communities, to urban Indian populations, and so our focus is to um, align our services with the priorities and the needs of the communities that we serve. But those seven core functions outlined in the legislation include, and this is not surprising, giving a name like tribal epidemiology centers, um, to collect data, to evaluate data in programs, to identify health priorities in partnership with tribes, make recommendations for health service needs, um, preferably data-driven recommendations, the same with making recommendations for improving healthcare delivery systems, providing epidemiologic technical assistance to tribes and tribal organizations to build public health infrastructure and capacity within the community, and finally, to provide disease surveillance to tribes. And again, I'll just reiterate that how um, various texts prioritize these seven core functions or operationalize them may vary, and it really is dependent upon the priorities and the needs of the communities served by the tech. Um, but what you'll also notice from this list is if you look at the definition of epidemiology, um, some of these functions go a little bit beyond that. And while the name Tribal Epidemiology Center is included in the legislation, I, I think it's fair to argue that the work that we're doing is very much applied and very much broader in, in encompassing a larger public health function. And so what this next slide does is it really maps on our services to the 10 essential public health services um, and those three um, key core functions of public health. So when we talk about what tribal epidemiology centers are doing in alignment with all of the essential public health services, if we start with monitoring health, 
Techs do community health assessments in partnership with tribal communities. Uh, we provide public health surveillance, or oftentimes we work to enhance public health surveillance systems that exist um, to enhance their meaningfulness for the communities that we serve. Many of us maintain population registries to monitor um, population health over time. We gather secondary data, existing data on behalf of tribal communities, and again, work to expand and enhance this information. Um, we analyze and report public health data. When we look at the service of diagnose and investigate, we have trained epidemiologists on our teams. We can provide rapid assessments. For the last three years, many of us have been involved in directly providing outbreak investigations with COVID-19 pandemic or training and supporting tribal community members to lead outbreak investigations, case and in, or contact tracing and case and contact monitoring in their communities. We then work to translate some of the information that we collect to inform, educate, and empower. Many of us are involved in health education, health promotion interventions, really designed to promote health and wellness and prevent disease. Uh, we issue public health alerts. We produce and disseminate culturally centered health communications products. Partnerships are key. All of us are involved in some types of coalition building, whether we're establishing the coalitions and maintaining and sustaining them, or we're part of steering committees that exist um, among the communities that we serve, the populations we serve, and external partners. When we look at policy, um, many of us are focused on not only collecting information and sharing information, but also then helping to translate that information into um, action. And strategic action planning is one great example of that, that many of our centers are involved in, and then leading to the development of policy and analysis of policies. Also community health improvement planning. We tend to skip over enforcing laws. That's not typically a function that we see with tribal epidemiology centers. Um, but then when we look at linkages um, to um, healthcare services, we do provide local healthcare system needs assessments in partnership with ITU facilities. Um, we provide consumer surveys. We work with existing EHR systems, um, looking at other key metrics that are important for um, clinical outcomes like GIPRA and diabetes audit data reporting. All of our centers are very invested in strengthening the capacity and enhancing the capacity that exists within tribes and tribal public health departments. Um, all of us in, are, are very much um, providers of public health trainings, oftentimes helping um, our partners um, achieve certifications, um, continuing education um, to advance their role within the communities that they serve. We're also committed to um, advancing the next generation of American Indian and Alaska Native public health professionals. All of our centers currently provide student internship opportunities and mentorship opportunities. We're also very much involved in evaluation, program evaluation. We have evaluators on staff, evaluation specialists. We can provide program evaluation services, or we can provide that technical support uh, for tribal communities to lead their own evaluation efforts. Other evaluation-related activities, we um, develop surveys. Um, we can work with communities to develop evaluation plans. We're often included in new grant applications to provide that technical support and assistance with the evaluation of new endeavors um, that various tribal public health programs um, choose to take on. And then right there in the center, we have research, and many of us are involved directly in health research, community-based participatory research, conducting literature reviews, um, identifying, adapting, and implementing evidence-based interventions to enhance um, health and wellness. Um, so in short, epidemiology centers um, characterizes us perhaps as just data folks, but as you can see here, we're involved in quite a bit of the application of data um, in translating that data into meaningful action in partnership with the communities that we serve. Tribal epicenters are also part of a consortium. So the Tribal Epidemiology Center directors have formed what we call the Tribal Epicenter Consortium or TECC. Um, and our mission is, it's stated right here, it's to improve the health status of American Indian and Alaska Natives by identification and understanding of health risks and inequities, strengthening public health capacity, and assisting in disease prevention and control. And we established TechC really um, because of this vision that we had together, um, where we would come together as a strong interwoven group of tribal epicenters working to develop, working together to develop 
a national tribal epicenter narrative, enhancing data access and stewardship, establishing respected multi-directional public health collaborations, and diversifying our um, funding bases to ensure that we are sustainable. And the tribal epicenters have actually been meeting since, typically we have met quarterly. Um, since 2020, March of 2020, at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, we started meeting weekly. We met weekly for two years, and over the last year plus now, we've been meeting every other week. Um, so we are interconnected. We are sharing our successful strategies. We do have joint collaborations that we implement um, collectively as well. We now have a, a website as well. Um, the address is right there on top, tribalepicenters.org. Um, if you do log into this website, you'll see information about all 12 tribal epicenters and about techs globally. Um, there's also linkages to all of the individual tech websites as well. There are success stories, there are publications, there's a variety of information here um, beyond what I'm covering today. I do want to call your attention, though, to three publications that are currently circulating. Um, the Tribal Epicenters back in 2013 put together a best practices um, resource guide, um, which is the center document. You can find that on that tribalepicenters.org website. Uh, we're currently working to update this with new best practices and strategies, um, but those that we established um, back with this document are, are still commonly utilized across our centers. We also recently put together a supplement to the Journal of Public Health Management and Practice with articles from a number of tribal epicenters and our partners, highlighting some of the key work that we do um, in our various regions. And then recently, the GAO released a report on tribal epicenters, and this was in response to some challenges that we experienced during the COVID-19 pandemic um, with access um, to health data, and in particular, access to data from HHS. As I mentioned, the Affordable Care Act um, clearly states uh, that tribal epicenters are public health authorities and shall have access to um, HHS data, data that's within the possession of the secretary. And for some of our centers, this was a particular challenge, especially in the midst of a public health emergency, a global pandemic. And so this report outlined some of the key recommendations that came from the GAO um, in response to tribal epicenters' concerns about data access, about policies that are in place for recognizing our public health authority within these HHS agencies, and also about um, the lack of protocols that are in place for requesting data and for agencies to respond to data requests from tribal epidemiology centers. I'll add, there's not a slide here. Unfortunately, this report talks primarily about access. I will say for those of us who have already been able to achieve some degree of access to some of these data systems, or have um, been able to at least um, observe what's available at the national level, um, there are deep concerns about quality as well. So while the recommendations are skewed towards access concerns, um, what we're finding is as we are slowly obtaining access, we're now realizing that there are significant quality concerns in the data such that there's still going to be quite a bit of work to do beyond just getting tribal epicenter access to some of these data systems. Does quality mean ac uh, uh, accuracy? So to a lesser extent, accuracy, to a greater extent, missingness of data, important data, like for instance, race or ethnicity. So if the data sets don't include race and ethnicity, it's very difficult for us to produce meaningful information for tribal leadership. Misclassification is another. And I'll just give one specific example from here at our center. Our center since April of 2020 has been conducting the majority of case investigations for COVID-19 cases on tribal lands. We input all of the data that we collect during each investigation into the state's mandatory reporting system, which is then supposed to be rolled up into the CDC's overall system. What we find if we look at the data through CDC is that the majority of the fields that we collected and that we inputted into our state system are not in that CDC database, which is supposed to just be an aggregation of all of the data that states are collecting. However, we're learning that there are interoperability issues where some of the data just isn't able to be transmitted from states to the federal government. In some instances, states withhold some of that data. And in other instances, we're finding that um, the information when it is transmitted 
um, it's coming in formats that aren't recognized on the other end, and therefore it's often delayed in terms of its presentation in those data systems. So for a variety of reasons, we're concerned about quality. The most important thing that we hear from tribal leaders is they want their own data, which is a reasonable request, and that's what we're here to try and provide. And if we're unable to, um, despite having access to the data systems, that presents a serious challenge for everybody. And so what we have found is we've used a tremendous amount of our resources to try and enhance the existing data that's there to either correct for the racial misclassification, to link data systems to ones where the information is of higher quality. We've done other things like geocoding. We've wound up collecting our own data, providing public health surveillance directly in partnership with tribal communities, as opposed to having states or the federal government lead the public health surveillance efforts. And all of that is in an, in an effort to really enhance the quality so that the data that we do receive is representative of the populations we serve and will be meaningful for them to actually drive action. And again, unfortunately, this report is a little bit skewed towards the access challenges that we've had. And, and I think a part two is warranted because now that we're starting to see what is available, we're recognizing tremendous amount of concerns with the quality. Well, is this uh, tied into um, the IHS uh, IT modernization agenda? Yeah, so Chairman, I, I don't believe the GAO report is tied into that, um, but certainly there is a need for tribal epicenters and others to be connected to that plan for modernization, data modernization. We have just recently received a presentation from CDC about including a tribal epidemiology center representative on its data modernization initiatives, um, which is a good step. Okay, so I'm, I'm wondering a couple of questions. Uh, if, the, if it's a quality data, so it tells me that the uh, systems, the, the, the fields that you gather the data, they're not all the data, the, the fields aren't there. So you're not, you don't have the fields for, for data input um, or proper analysis or uh, analysis, I guess, uh, of um, the work you guys do. And I'm just wondering also relative to that point is, is um, how well are we doing getting the funding for our epidemiology centers? Sure, so fortunately the funding has increased, uh, which is important. Uh, when I started, we could through our funding probably only support five or six staff members. Um, so I began working with our tribal epicenter 12 years ago. That has changed. We have a much more robust staff. Uh, we now have 35 staff members on our team, uh, but keep in mind we're serving 27 tribal communities and trying to provide not only epidemiology services, high quality services, but also um, you know, a broader um, suite of public health services. So currently we could certainly benefit from additional funding, there's no doubt. Uh, we're happy to see that it's gone up um, to some degree. Uh, a lot of that, however, was tied to the recent bills around um, COVID-19 response. So we don't know what this will look like going forward um, now that those funding seem to be going away. Okay, well, I know that um, administration was proposing a stronger budget for this year that didn't come to fruition, uh, although we did get uh, uh, well over 300 million. I don't know how much of it actually went to, to the centers, um, but uh, um, next year, a question would be uh, in next year's budget, which is a pretty robust increase. I'm assuming that as you're looking at your line items that affect your centers, that, that you're in the mix of upgrading uh, uh, capacity. Well, let me pause there, uh, Kev. I, I see Nicholas' uh, hand up. So, um, Nicholas, um, floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Just, a, a, I guess, a brief question, and, and maybe that's something that might not be able to be answered, but I, I'd like to raise it. I'm a, I'm a big supporter of the epicenters, and you know the, the capacity that they can do things that tribes struggle with. You know, when, when it comes to talking about data and gathering that, that is very tedious and, and time consuming for doctors you know, in our tribal communities when we're already short staffed to go and mine that data uh, for the tribal leadership. 
and trying to educate tribes on how epicenters are there to help them with a lot of that data. Um, you know, the, the tribes can have concerns and, and rightfully so, you know, a tribe data is a tribe data, but the data that the epicenters uh, gather are out of the system, you know, from IHS through, you know, working with the states. Is there anything that we can do, uh, you know, on this conversation, working with CMS to kind of elevate uh, the epicenters more and educating tribes? Because there's a lot of providers that I talk with in the Northwest that don't understand the epicenters. Um, they, they can unintentionally cause maybe a, a conflict that, you know, they might think we have to go through the state to get the data, not knowing that we have epicenters there or that are there for the tribes. Um, so I'm just wondering if there's ways that we can elevate that, but also, you know, CMS, anything you can do to, to help uh, push the states as well to understand that the epicenters are there for the tribe. So because I, I think, you know, as we have turnover in the state leadership, they don't always understand uh, the epicenters as well. And, and I think there's some room for improvement on how we can do that uh, to bring everybody on the, the same page. Because there's a lot of things that the epicenters uh, do for tribes, but the turnover, uh, it often can get lost. And, and I've seen some of those frustrations that we're having, that they're not fun conversations to navigate. So anything that we can have CMS, the T-tag or CMS help us with, it'd be greatly appreciated. I just want to add those comments. Yeah, thank you for those comments. Um, so in response to that, there, there are a number of things that I think everybody could do that would help support um, the overall vision of tribal epidemiology centers. Um, number one would be to ensure recognition of our public health authority status. That has never been more critical than it has for the past three years. Um, you know, when COVID-19 first came around, I, I think our expectation was that there would be a rapid shift in how we share data across key entities between tribes, tribal epidemiology centers, Indian Health Service, state departments of health. And that really didn't occur. And every entity I just mentioned is a public health authority. And in the midst of a public health emergency, there should have been immediate real-time data sharing across all of those entities. And it didn't happen. The barriers that we have in place or that we had already had in place just remained and tightened. And as a result, it became a real scramble to try and provide tribal leadership with the data that they needed, the data about their own people. And this continues. I, I can't say things necessarily got that much better throughout the course of the pandemic. I think we found our traditional workarounds, which is what continues to have to happen. When the federal government is providing public health surveillance, it releases dollars to the states to conduct public health surveillance for the state population. The states are then expected to include American Indian Alaska Native population into their surveillance efforts but no funding goes to the tribal communities, to tribal epicenters to support that. And the state in the end is trying to produce representative data of its entire constituency. So the ability to use the public health surveillance system that the federal government has established in partnership with the states to produce tribe specific estimates is not there. And so instead what a center like ours does is we actually receive funding and then turn that back over to our State Department of Health to do oversampling of public health surveillance within tribal communities that are interested in producing their own data and having their own reports. That's a system that's not working for everybody. If the entity with the least amount of funding, the tribal epicenter, is the one having to put forward funding in order to have the public health surveillance that we're expected to already be um, taking place at the federal and state level, um, if that's the model, that's not sustainable. Or if we have to continue to do that, then the funding needs to be stronger. So at this point, you know, our focus is not only on providing the service, but also, and I think this is very important, it's also strengthening the capacity within tribal communities and within the urban Indian health populations to build and sustain those public health functions locally. And that's another role that we play. 
And so your support in communicating that to any tribal leader who may not be fully utilizing their tribal epicenter, I think would be very valuable because not only can we provide the service, but we can also work in partnership with any community as a means of strengthening the, the local capacity, building the public health infrastructure, and hopefully creating sustainable um, systems that are in place um, to only further protect health and wellness. So I um, uh, uh, tell us a little bit, we have a little bit of time here. Right? Uh, and I don't see any hands up yet. Uh, tell me more about, um, you know, the, uh, the collaboration between tribes that the epicenters serve um, and, and tribal specific needs uh, so that the profiles of what's going on in, in their communities is, is able to be gathered and analyzed, if you will, um, and, uh, and, and challenges that we might have with regard to the systems communicating. I, I, I can't think of the right word here, uh, Kevin, I, but I, I'm hoping that you understand what I'm trying to get at here. I think so. So, so the biggest challenge I think we face as a nation is that we don't have interoperable health systems, right, that are monitoring data. So EHR systems don't connect to each other very easily. Um, State Department of Health systems don't connect to each other. They don't connect to tribes. They don't connect to Indian health service systems. They don't connect easily to federal systems. So none of our data is formatted in a way that it's shared in real time. So all of the information is sort of in different buckets. And what a center like ours is doing is trying to reach out to all of those buckets and pull out the most meaningful data and then package it together and present it back to the tribes that we serve in hopes that that information will be utilized you know, for action, to drive action. But sometimes it's just you know, for the very purposes of information. But right now there's no button you can click, there's no dashboard you can go to and just pull in that information uh, for yourself. Instead, you need to have a technical expert that's going to go work with your State Department of Health, that's gonna work with Indian Health Service, that's potentially gonna reach out to CDC, that may need to collect um, new information and then pull all of that together and package it in a way that looks cohesive, but hasn't been um, produced that way initially. It seems and, to me that the pandemic we just went through revealed that point. Um, you know, in not having accurate information of just what is going on regarding COVID um, or even subsequently the other viruses that, that are emerging and uh, how it's affecting our community. So um, um, I'll pause here. Uh, Nicholas has got his hand up again. Yeah, just kind of on that comment and, and I think some of it was answered. You know, the epicenters, uh, why I mentioned them, I'm a big supporter with what they can do is because they have a lot of the capacity to, to do that, to go into different systems and pull that data out that isn't talking to one another or isn't linking together. And so what we see is, you know, in our tribal communities, we try to look at our local data, you know, going through our county department of health or the state. And I think what, what I've seen is when we get new providers or new people involved, they don't understand, like in Washington state, that our epicenter for the Portland area is in Portland. It might not be in Washington state. And so naturally they would want to go to the local or the state and, and try to, to get data. And they don't understand that the epicenters are there for the tribes to do just that, to mine the data and pull it together. And so like, and I'll, I'll be able to follow up with you a little bit more offline on this one, but you know, when we have a, a challenge between that um, and our epicenters aren't able to link the data or pull it together, often the data that we can see from the state or the local will be wrong because it's not capturing all of the data or telling it in the way that we as tribal leaders need it to be told. And that's, the, that's one of the strengths of the epicenters. And we need them to really kind of be that, that key that pulls everything together. Uh, but with turnover, you know, whether it's in state or tribal communities or wherever, you know, we have to continually re-educate people about that. And uh, that's, that's why I wanted to highlight this. And, and you know, I, I think we got some homework to do on educating 
how some of the, the tribes or the, the areas or the states, some, some areas, you know, they, they don't have those struggles, but I, I think it, it's like the tide, it comes and goes. And, and we'll, we'll see that in this kind of work, you know, get people to understand it. And then they're like, okay, I get it. And then they might leave. And then we have to redo it again. And so that, that's why I wanted to emphasize, you know, how can we do more to educate the states and the tribes on how epicenters play such an important role in gathering the data the way that we need it. Because um, without the epicenters, we would be operating in silos and we don't have the capacity uh, to, to go into those different silos and pull that all, all that data together. So I, I just appreciate this conversation. Yeah, I'm multitasking. Apologize here. Yeah, I, I agree with Nicholas on this on this topic. Let me ask another separate question. Uh, how well do you think that the epicenters are doing in uh, uh, reaching out and recruiting Indian talent um, in this very technical world that that uh, you guys operate? Yeah, that's another really great question. And so I mentioned the student internships, which I think has been extremely valuable for all of our centers to have. So at our center, we have three um, cohorts of student internships every single year. So a spring semester, summer semester, fall semester. Um, we bring on anywhere from three to five American Indian or Alaska Native student interns in any public health related field. And I have to say, you know, it has been, the internship program has been a major pipeline for employment at our organization, which is great to see. And so I've been with the organization now since 2002. And I would say there's already at least a dozen individuals who have joined our organizations where they began as students and they've gone on to get advanced degrees um, in the field of public health, several of them doctoral degrees and continue to flourish as, um, you know, at the tribal organization, whether it's in our tribal epicenters or within their own tribes. So I think it's an excellent opportunity through tribal epicenters to bring in folks um, to get exposure to public health. But I will say, Chairman, I think the biggest challenge we're still having is in the actual field of epidemiology. There's still a very limited number of American Indian Alaska Native students that are actually studying epidemiology. So I think we have more work to do there. It's probably in other areas of public health that we're seeing greater numbers of students and interest in our internships. Um, but it's working and we're happy about that. And what's really great is that once people are graduating, instead of you know, going on to academic institutions or leaving the area altogether, many are sticking around and staying within our organizations or going home to their tribal communities as well. That's encouraging. Dr. Carroll. Hey, um, good afternoon, everyone. And Kevin, uh, thank you so much for finally getting this presentation done. Really appreciate your having the time and energy. Um, I do wanna just let everyone know that CMS has been working very hard at trying to improve the quality of CMS and in American Indian Alaska Native data. We know that it's not perfect. Um, gathering the data prior to COVID was not a priority. But with this administration, it has become a priority. So we have many people working on it. We're going to have another good presentation by the Office of Minority Health during T this TTAG meeting. I have one question uh, and for you, Kevin, have you had an opportunity to access TMSIS or look at any other CMS data fields? How has that been? And um, do we have any um, hope that maybe we can get something good from CMS. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for that, Dr. Carroll. So, so interestingly, we did just have a discussion about the need to start looking at some Medicaid specific data within our center. And we have a partnership in place to start looking at that information. So that'll be the first time we're really looking closer at, at some of the Medicaid data um, that, that we should have access to. Um, the other area would also be um, through PDMP. So when we're talking about the opioid epidemic, um, wanting to look more at prescribing of medication or yeah, medication assisted therapy like buprenorphine. Um, if that um, therapy is being billed to Medicaid, um, that is information that our centers will be able to access 
to look at the extent to which the ITU facilities are providing um, naloxone, suboxone, and other important MAT services in response to the really exponentially increasing rates of um, opioid-related overdose. So we're just now getting into that um, you know, sort of partnership with CMS and with folks um, who do hold that data, the stewards of that data, and looking at ways that we can look at it together in hopes of, again, not only you know, having a sense of what the data looks like at the regional level and understanding trends, but also really being able to drive some action. And I think, you know, once we have a better understanding of how the practices within the um, healthcare systems map onto the need based on what we're seeing, because we are seeing good data now related to um, overdose and in particular fatal overdose, um, we wanna make sure that the prescribing patterns are in line with the burden. And we haven't really had great access to Indian Health Service um, health record data that would allow us to do that. So looking over to CMS instead, I think is a really viable option. Thank you. Back to you, Ron. Okay. Um... Any other questions for Kevin? Great, I, I agree with uh, Dr. Carroll. Uh, great presentation, uh, um, very informative. The charts was uh, informative uh, for those of us like me uh, as a chair. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like Nicholas. I, I know what they do in as a general observation, but uh, there's so much when you pull the curtain back. What you guys do to help understand the profile and what's going on in any country, uh, your underscoring of the. The importance of a of a public uh, healthcare official is a big deal. I mean that that was another thing that that got revealed in the uh, pandemic. You know we had to go out and recruit them um, and find somebody who knew who knows about the public health issues with, with regard to these uh, viruses and how they how they function and what we can do to be be safe and be smart about it, protecting our people. So those. Uh, uh, um, it just revealed uh, the importance of that. And, and then just understanding how it affected us. Uh, uh, there's no question that uh, we crisscross Indian country, uh, our people got, got hammered um, by the virus and, and even trying to struggle with, the, with these new uh, variants uh, that many of us have a hard time understanding. Um, Dr. Carroll, your hands back up. Yep, just one more quick thing. For Kevin, can you please send us those slides so we can distribute them to TTAD? Sure, I'd be happy to. Great, that's yeah. all, thank you. Yeah, very, very helpful. Uh, a great uh, overview of it. Mark, I see your face up there. You, you got a question? Uh, just just thank yous, uh, Chairman. Uh, Kevin, you and your team, we, we really appreciate you uh, joining the data subcommittees. Um, you know, giving input there, sharing out with us uh, in preparation for uh, sharing out with TTAG. Um, you know, clearly the work of our tribal epicenters are they're doing critical work within our, our communities and, and tribal nations. Um, many of our tribal members work within those facilities. Um, and so, uh, again, Kevin, just great work to you and your team uh, for presentation and look forward to uh, further collaboration uh, with your epicenter as well as the others. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, one more thing on your uh, your new uh, um, coalition website. So these reports are on your website, correct? Yes. If you go to tribalepicenters.org, you'll be able to find all three of these reports, as well as some success stories, access and links to employment opportunities, as well as direct links to all of our individual websites. Well, that's outstanding. Uh, 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 Nicholas, so we're going to have to make sure that our... Uh, uh, Portland Area Health Board has it on our website, so we have a link to a, um, a great resource. All right, well, we're at the end of our session here, uh, uh, at least for this uh, update. So, uh, Kevin, thank you. Great work. It uh, obviously shows the dedication you have to uh, epicenters and, and the importance of uh, it to our uh, community. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity and the questions and your support. Uh, have a good rest of your meeting. <laughs>